Mm-hmm. So you've dope. never, you said you've never been to therapy, right? No, I've never been. Um, because the way you speak sounds like you've been to therapy, but it's his humil- also- the humility that he has. That right. I think it's the open spirit. Married. Not to can I go behind you, precious? I didn't mean to cut you off. I I just want to say one thing, and I'll go after you. Just I just wanted to married, say y'all, just so y'all that um, you know, you for you not to have gone to therapy, you have a lot more tenacity and bounce back than those who are not in the right mind frame when they go to therapy right so and that's that topic that we were talking about just because you're expressive or whatever doesn't make you or makes you more emotionally intelligent I think your experiences has allowed you to see certain things that and and actually be in certain things that says you know what I don't want to do this anymore I don't I, I know it ain't worth it I know this is not for me I'm gonna keep pushing I'm still have this positive attitude. I'm going to rise above it. And a lot of people do not have that attitude. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't, I I think we kind of talked about it before when you had went to that funeral about church and stuff like that. So I, I, I'm not quite sure where you lay with that, but you sound like someone who does have a very strong spiritual um, foundation to be able to teach others how to do that. So I just wanted to let you know, that you know that. um you definitely do have that and you appreciate definitely that. can help others and i'm sure you are i just wanted to say um i haven't been to therapy but my my husband has and um i i really it 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 conflicted me convicted me um i should say convicted me to really look myself in the mirror by seeing his growth and his changes I'm overdue for my sessions, but what I will say is, Paris, your friends and family, your group, they owe you that self-reflection of you doing the work. I feel like if anybody in your circle is really elevating themselves um, and and growing and going through a period of self-actualization and self-reflection and self-growth, if you care about that person, you should pick up the mirror as well and look how you could be contributing to anything in their life and what part you play and how you can better yourself. Um, I'm kind of like Marcus, like I sat back, just really had a moment of being um, just a moment of, of, I can't say it any better, of self-reflection and, and knowing that I had room to grow and seeing, seeing things right in my face, seeing my husband move differently. And then I'm being like, okay, you know, like, okay, so this would, when he would move this way, I would do this, almost like a, a doggone Monopoly board, right? I, I'm seeing the pieces move around, and I'm seeing our life play out, and I'm seeing us as individuals, like we're actual pieces in a game. And so it really, it, it showed me how I played a part in certain things, right? Because when relationships break down, it's not just one person, it's always both individuals participating in that breakdown. It's not, you can't point the finger. You can't say, oh, it's you. Is this, we both willingly participate in, in, in relationships when they go through hard times, right? And so it, I, I urge people that are in therapy and how um, I, I just congratulate you guys in sharing how, you, how you've done that. People that are around you as well need to do the work in the support of you, but also looking at themselves and where they can grow in, in that relationship with you. I hear you, Casey, and I don't disagree. I would say that um, for me, it's a little bit different, which JR knows. For me, it's trauma. So my situation isn't a thing of, I finally wanted to go get some help. It was like, nah, something happened and this was necessary. Does that make sense? So um, the other parts of me being uncovered, that is a reflection, right? You know, like being a little bit more self-assertive, being a little bit more self-aware, uh, finding other new boundaries. But what I will share with you guys is that um, 
my therapist said that it's time for me to learn me as a whole nother person of who I am now. And that's nothing even my mom can do. with. You know, and I know we mentioned childhood trauma and stuff like that, but I am literally having the, um, having the, 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 the job, the task of learning me as a completely different individual. This is, this is very, it's a very much so out of body experience. So again, I always tell people I look okay. You know, I compartmentalize and I function very well. And I picked that up from being around men. Right. Um, and then it's black people. We conditioned to just keep going on. But realistically, I knew that if I did not go and find ways to learn how to process my emotions, it could get ugly because I don't even know what my triggers are. Any, I don't know what makes me angry. I don't know what makes me cry. I don't know what my triggers are anymore. And so to help myself, I got up and I went and got the help. I want to say to you, um, Paris, when you're saying like you getting to know yourself again, um, that you allow yourself to grieve who you were before because people don't talk enough about how you are attached to who you were. And so it's harder for you to break habits and patterns because you feel as though you're not being authentic or you're not being yourself. But it's also having space for that grace and to grieve, you know, like you are shedding and you are literally dying and rebirthing yourself to come back renewed and restored. And you need to have space where you understand that it's a process and it's not something that's going to happen overnight. And also that it's okay to still love those parts of yourself because you needed that version of yourself in order for you to become who you are now. So, um, yeah, You're that's on your journey. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you. Cause mm -hmm. my therapist also said the same thing. I need to give myself permission to grieve. You know, um, that's something that is very hard. Even the, the very act of just simple crying, you know, we always get the, Oh, you're masculine. You're aggressive. It's like, nah, we operate in high function and depression. We don't do vulnerability. We use words wrong. We're quick to call black women masculine. We're quick to call black women aggressive. And all it is, is that our reaction to vulnerability is not to cry. It's everything opposite of crying. Um, that's not aggression, right? And passion. It, we we have to be more courteous of how we use words. And I challenge it every time I hear it because nothing about me is masculine. You know, like nothing about me is actually masculine. I'm a very feminine and soft woman. But, you know, we use words that are pushed in order to coerce people into doing what we want them to do. And I'm learning to accept that. And I'm learning to accept a lot of things that, again, how you show up to other people. How do you show up to other people? Because it starts to matter eventually. 